Yo, this is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors at Alpha Claims and Hire Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company, get a replacement car anywhere in one hour. Thank you for joining me. This story comes from Accrington and the murderer of Lindsay Burbeck has been sentenced on Wednesday. He has received life in prison for the brutal murder of the teaching assistant. Initially, the killer's identity was withheld due to his age, and I'll explain reasons as to why in a minute. Lindsay Burbeck was murdered and dumped in a wheelie bin. And today, Rocky Marciano Price, 17, from Winnie Hill Road in Accrington, has been jailed for her murder. Lindsay Burbeck was going for a walk in Woodland, reported the local papers at the time. A post-mortem examination revealed she had died as a result of compression of the neck. Her body was found in Accrington Cemetery in August last year. The judge in charge of the case, Justice Yip, lifted a Section 45 order banning the 17-year-old killer from being named after he was found guilty of murder. The judge said that the murder was truly shocking and this dreadful crime generated strong public interest in the local area and nationwide. Naturally, the public want to know who this person was. The defendant's photograph was already in the public domain as part of a CCTV appeal to trace witnesses for the murder and the judge determined that anyone that wished him ill harm could identify him if they wanted to through that picture. The judge also said the wider public are likely to want to know his identity and the background with a view to making sense of how a young person could do this. There is strong public interest in full and unrestricted reporting in what is mainly an exceptional case. The real public interest exists now at the time of conviction and sentencing. Continuing reporting restrictions would substantially and considerably restrict the freedom of the press, the judge said. Price's defence had opposed the application due to the teenager's vulnerabilities and the court heard how he was attacked twice while on remand at HMP Weatherby. Barrister Mark Stewart said that Rocky Price's difficulties are particularly bad with verbal communication and other difficulties as well and this has affected him in prison. They said he's about to face a significant custodial sentence and not only is it a life sentence but a significant amount of time before he's considered to go towards the parole board. He's currently in a young offenders institute and he's a category A prisoner. Some inmates have an inkling as to why he's in there. The concern is if he is named, there is a significant prospect other people will find out who he is and cause him difficulties. There is a certainty and potential those in custody may feel a degree of revulsion about what he has done and may even verbally or physically abuse him. It may be difficult for him to respond or report it to the appropriate authorities, his defence said. The effect of revealing his name may also affect his family as well and various members may receive trouble. It took a jury of nine men and three women just four and a half hours on Wednesday to find him guilty, unanimously guilty of killing the teaching assistant. Price was born in Accrington to a traveller family and lived not far from Accrington Cemetery in the Winnie Hill area of the town with his parents Martina and Creddy Price and his five siblings. His mum is 37 and his dad is 47 and they was present in court for every single day of the hearing. On Wednesday they looked on for the public gallery as their son appeared via video link and was remanded to HMP Weatherby, a young offending institute in West Yorkshire. On hearing the jury's verdict, Price's family wept in the courtroom. From the offset, jurors and members of the press and public have been told about Price's learning difficulties and the fact that he had autism and ADHD. Something that he was medicated for. He attended the alternative school in Barnold Wicks. And it was here that he learned skills in woodwork and, and landscape gardening. With teacher Timothy Bradley telling jurors he preferred practical things over academic subjects like maths and English. The court had heard that Price had a below IQ level of 65 and would attend his school several afternoons a week. Although he rarely engaged in conversation with teachers or pupils. He was described as very quiet and pretty much non-verbal, often answering questions with a grunt or the shrug of a shoulder. Mr Bradley said he never saw any aggression from him ever. 
In order to spark an interest in academia, the teachers closest to him told jurors they would engage him in sneaky teaching, which involved tactics such as dropping simple maths into practical tasks, like asking him to work out the perimeter of a wooden box that he was making. The court also heard how he enjoyed taking care of chickens, watching western films and playing Xbox. Mr Bradley told the court that he was a strong walker. He did the Bronze Duke of Edinburgh Award with him and involved walking 13 kilometres, which he would complete with no problem. He was definitely a strong lad for his age. However, it was during the trial that the jurors heard about Price's vulnerabilities and difficulties with social interaction. This led to his teachers to question his alleged involvement in the disappearance of Lindsay Burbeck. Mr Bradley added sometimes he would do work, sometimes he wouldn't. Sometimes he'd say no and would be adamant that he wouldn't do it. After getting to know him, I knew there was no point in pushing him if he said no. He could be very easily led, they said, and if he was asked to do something, he would and would not ask a lot of questions about it. I would see him follow somebody's decision without questioning anything sometimes. In relation to the footage released by the police following Lindsay's disappearance, his initial thought was that someone had asked him to move the body or the wheelie bin. In a report produced in 2015, a psychologist assessed Price as having limiting understandings of his own emotions and own emotional well-being and also appeared to have little insight into the connection between events and emotions. A report in 2016 described the youth as having no stranger awareness and needed supervision outside. His head teacher told jurors she had known Price for three and a half years and had taught him on a one-to-one -one basis and she never had any issue with him in school. She said he had never caused anyone any bother whatsoever. He never brought money into school. I don't think money was a concern to him. If he needed anything, his family provided it. He's not a person who would be motivated by money. Rocky had never caused any issues at school. 12 days after her disappearance, Mrs. Burbeck's body was found in Accrington Cemetery. This is also where Rocky Price's relatives are as well, including his grandfather, who is also called Rocky Marciano Price. Following his arrest on August the 27th last year and 11 police interviews in which he provided no comment answers before confessing in a pre-prepared statement to moving her body for an unknown male, but he denied killing her. He was charged with her murder on August the 31st. An original trial date of February 2020 was set with the prosecution barrister David David McLaughlin QC presenting his evidence. This included witness statements and CCTV to a jury of 11 women and one man. However, following an application to discharge the jury from the defence barrister Mark Fennels, the judge in the trial, the judge in the trial Amanda Justice Yip agreed, and a retrial with a new jury was ordered. However, in what would be a setback in the Crown's quest for justice, this was due to the coronavirus outbreak, and the retrial had to be rescheduled, and proceedings finally commenced on August the first this month. A new jury was sworn in, and after seven days of hearing evidence, they included. CCTV footage, witness statements and forensic findings, Mr McLaughlin and Mr Fennels, the defence and prosecution, presented their closing speeches. Rocky Price was a stranger to Lindsay. The attack was thought to have been unprovoked and carried out while he was prowling the area looking for lone females. He confessed to burying Lindsay but denied any involvement in her killing. He had no previous convictions or cautions and had lived all his life with his parents and five siblings at their home near the cemetery where the family have lived for 30 years. It was revealed he was an exceptionally quiet teenager. Before the murder of Miss Burbeck, she had left her home to go for a late afternoon walk to a nearby wooded area known as the Coppice. She invited her teenage daughter, Sarah, and Sarah's boyfriend over for tea at 6pm. But when she did not return from her walk, her family raised the alarm. The court heard her attacker had been on the prowl in the woods and must have killed Miss Burbeck shortly after she entered the woods. Another woman in the same woods had told police that she'd feared for her life when a lone male in a grey tracksuit and his hood up followed her on a walk. The verdict was returned a year after the murder of Miss Burbeck. She had split up from her husband and moved to a new home in March last year, where she started a new relationship. The teenager had previously pleaded guilty to assisting in the disposal of her body, but claimed he played no role in her death. He said he was offered a lot of money by a mystery man to get rid of the body. 
This is what Rocky Marciano claimed. And he said he had not met the man before and he has not met him since. Nor have I had any contact with him and he has not paid him any money. He told him that he would leave the money for me near where the body had been taken to in the cemetery after everything had cleared up. The Crown Prosecution Service did not accept his version of events and said the defendant's account was, was implausible fiction. Miss Burbeck's grieving husband, Tim Burbeck, previously said his wife's death had broken him and both of their children. Stephen Burbeck, who was 19 years old, said the person who had killed his mother had robbed the chance of her to become a grandmother. Her son is the chairman of nearby Hapton Parish Council and he told his friend it was broken and it certainly hurt. He also praised the police for their speedy arrest and the way they dealt with his family, but he said it's horrendous watching our children go through this. Stephen said he cherished the thought of seeing his mum smile and the fact that she won't see me and my sister grow up and not going to be there on our wedding days and see our grandchildren deeply saddens us, all taken by a selfish person. The discovery of the body brought to an end an extensive search and thousands of people in the community were involved in handing out flyers and looking for Miss Burbeck. More than 19,000 people joined a Facebook group to assist emergency services with the search for the worker. Rocky Marciano walked very calmly from the coppice two hours after murdering Lindsay Burbeck. His tracksuit top was unzipped and his chest was bare and his knees were also wet. With nothing but his own two hands, the 16-year-old had inflicted catastrophic injuries to the teaching assistant and left her dead in a wheelie bin. And the police believe he then stamped, kicked or kneeled on her neck. Price was a stranger completely and you've got to feel for the family of Lindsay Burbeck as well. This trial had so many different delays that it dragged out for so long. Another delay after the Covid and the retrial and getting rid of the jury. The defence tried to get it thrown out again. Three men from Accrington were arrested on suspicion of false imprisonment and the assault of a 22 year old man on a matter that was unrelated to the trial of Rocky Price. Detectives were informed that a video clip was found on a mobile phone of one of the persons that was detained in police custody for this fight. They claimed to have said that they was involved in the murder and also the disposal of the body. In essence, it was a confession. Although the content of the video was not consistent with the actual facts of the case, the defence put forward by the defendant was clearly something that had to be investigated to ensure that he was having a fair trial. So because he said somebody else paid him to do this and then they found a video of someone claiming to have done it, this actually helped his case. So they had to clear this aspect up. They did extensive inquiries to find out if this person was associated to the death and it was determined that he wasn't. That was another delay for the family that they went through. This is just a devastatingly sad story for a woman that was starting a new life and she had and she had a family and everything to look forward to. And some stories, it's just really hard to make sense of what happened. But I'd really appreciate it if you pay your respects in the comments. I'll be back again very shortly with some more news. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. I really appreciate you joining me. Peace.